joining us on our live stream as well. There is a, uh, a link to the, to the service, so hopefully you have downloaded it. We're going to ask everyone who's participating in the service to come up here and read from the microphone so that everyone who is not here present in, in this uh, hour at Mayerson Hall this morning will be able to hear what's going on and be able to participate. You'll need, you need to come off of the microphone in order to make that happen. Uh, just a word about our Tefila today. It is going to be a more creative service. We're not going to do the, the, uh, the traditional worship. We have passages that have been taken from Mark Saperstein's book, Agony in the Pulpit, uh, which is printed by Hebrew Union College Press and is a, an anthology of sermons that were given uh, before and after the Holocaust. So we've selected passages that are from just prior to the Crystal Knot and just after. So just a word of, of uh, remembrance for us is that the people who were giving these sermons, rabbis at the time, were not fully aware of what was going on uh, and also were not fully aware of what was going to happen in the future. So try to keep that in mind as you read what they, what they said, as we read what they said. Um, there is an explanation about the context on page two of the service, but we will begin with the opening song on page three. A D A D. response to the assassination of the German consular officer in Paris. In truth, the pogrom was planned and coordinated. Nothing we can read today or sing will allow us 
us to relive the terror that our people faced during those days. Yet here we are, sitting in front of this reconstructed ark, Rabbi Shmuel Poland's capstone project, which helps us remember the culture, the people, the Torah that was lost during the Holocaust. And we are next to the installation Tears of Joy, Tears of Hope. This art installation, which itself is a memorial to the events of Crystal Knock. And our rebuilding of Jewish life in North America and the world. During today's service, we will read words spoken in synagogues and printed by rabbis around the world immediately before and after the pogrom. Please note that the authors themselves did not know the extent of the horror to take place in the days and years to come. Our memorial today will have three parts, before, during, and after. One month before Crystal Knot, on October 4th, 1938, during Kol Nidre, Rabbi Israel Goldstein of Congregation B'nai Yeshua in New York spoke to his congregation. Today, living in a world of force, the Jew is excoriated by the high priest of force because his Bible has, has imposed a conscience of righteousness and justice upon the world. The prophets of might on neither the New Testament nor the Old Testament. Both Testaments are condemned as a menace. In 1933, taught assuming power, Hitler and Nazism served notice on the world that they repudiate democracy, excrete liberalism, scoff at the principles of human equality and brotherhood, revile the religious traditions of Judaism and of Christianity, exalt nationalism, chauvinism, glorify race hatreds, defy international decencies, and extol war as the highest and noblest way of life. At the same time, they proclaim a special tenderness toward animals. Never before in the history of our trials and tribulations has the issue been drawn so clearly. We are proud in the knowledge that Hitler is allergic to Judaism, which also means to Christianity. Never before has the ethical basis of our existence been so convincing. It makes the Akedah, sacrifice, worthwhile. Jews in many lands stand not only on the physical forefront, they are in the front-line trenches of the spiritual forefront. The story of Isaac's sacrifice at Moriah becomes a lesson in current events. The future will decide between the proponents of the book and the proponents of the sword. It is the modern phrase of the irreconcilable conflict between Jacob and Esau, and the Jew knows how to wait. Hitler talks about a thousand years, he is merely talking. The Jew, when he speaks about a thousand years, has the warning of four thousand years of history to which to point. Rabbi Maurice Eisendrath speaking that same night at Holy Blossom Temple in Toronto preached about the Ner Tamid, the eternal life. Indeed, my friends, we are witnessing no new phenomenon today. Even though terrified, hysterical Jews, ignorant of their past and unaware of history's verdicts against our adversaries, believe that in this hour we are being confronted by something altogether unique. Hitler will succeed in extinguishing one after another of those lights, to be rekindled no more in our day. He will succeed as he overruns country after country and causes nation after nation to beg in cowardly retreat. Unless, my friends, in the house of Israel, as in the land of Goshen in distant Egyptian days, the Ner Tamid continues to burn, continues still to burn. And that Hitler knows full well. Hitler and his ilk, and I fear he will now win increasing cohorts to his cause. Hitler and the peoples who follow him in all his vain, glorious madness hate the Jew because ever since that flaming word of God's revelation.
salvation enters the soul of Israel, the Jew has been the conscience of the world, the visible symbol, and at no time more so than in its atonement day, in this atonement day especially, of how far astray the sons of man had wandered. The Jew is maltreated, he is hated, he is rent asunder because he has believed in democracy, freedom, justice, peace. In age after age, when brutish men have sought to efface those ideals from the earth, what a bitter irony of fate. Of all the children of men, we are the most inhumanely treated because we believe most tacitly in humanity. November 4, 1938, the Friday evening just before Kristallnacht, Rabbi Max Nussbaum spoke in Berlin's Friedens Temple. It was to be the final Shabbat evening sermon delivered in that synagogue, which was to be destroyed just days later during the pogrom itself. He said, How else is it possible that this great world of ours does not seem to be able to cope with such a tiny problem, comparatively speaking, of a few hundred thousand people in need of a little space where they could live in peace and security? The world has become a slave of space, a slave of borderlines, of frontiers, and human beings are shipped back and forth between these sacred borders as if the humans themselves were lifeless objects. It is as if this magnificent and advanced world of ours has never been told not to shed human blood, has never heard a family torn asunder, has forgotten how a father loves his child. In short, it acts, this world of ours, as if all elements of humanity, of humanness, do not exist any longer.
just six days after the pogrom on Wednesday, November 16, 1938, Rabbi A.S. Super, spiritual leader of Moortown Synagogue in England, spoke at a protest that was held at Queen's Hotel in Leeds. He said,
residential address for Bidet Rip, First Lodge in, of, in, of England in London. In it, he refers to, your, he will mention a debate that took place. That debate in Parliament led to the beginning of the Kinder Transport Program, which would go on to rescue 10,000 German Jewish refugee children. Freedom and righteousness have hidden their heads. The sky is dark, hopes are vanishing, and the heart is heavy. What has happened in Germany during the last two or three weeks has staggered the world, has staggered the conscience of humanity. What can we do? Half a million are drowning and call frantically for help. And the captains of the seaworthy ships on the ocean of life, of the life of the nations, must cast anchor and take the drowning men, women, and children on board. Release from the concentration camp, often from torture and death, may depend now upon a visa to another country. We must help to preserve the moral basis of the world. We must not tire to call out violence, violence. And we must not weaken in our protestations against the wicked deeds of the evildoers. We must help to keep the conscience of humanity alive. The debate in the House of Commons last Monday was also an event which, for with, with which to be gratified. The sky is dark, hope are vanishing. The heart is heavy. But new light must come, new hope, and a new, a comforted heart. still 
their blood cries out from the earth. And so many, so many at Dachau, at Buchenwald, at Abi Yar. What can we say? What can we do? How bear the unbearable or accept what life has brought to our people? All who are born must die. But how shall we compare the slow passage of time with the callous slaughter of the innocent cut off before their time? They live with faith, not all, but many, and surely many die with faith in God, in life, and the goodness that even flames cannot destroy. May we find a way to the strength of that faith, that trust, that sure sense that life and soul endure beyond this body's death. They have left their lives to us. Let a million prayers rise whenever Jews worship. Let a million candles glow against the darkness of their unfinished lives. If you feel that you would like to do so, El Noe Rachamim can also be recited standing. Yikadal, Yikadash, Shemei Rabbah, 
just want to thank everybody for coming. Bokertov.